What can we learn from this annus horribilis, from the continuing COVID pandemic to Russia's invasion of Ukraine on 24th February, from the heat wave, droughts and forest fires in the summer, to the extreme right wingness of some European governments such as Italy and Sweden. We want to insist on the fact that at Vox Europe, we attach particular importance to this fully fledged journalistic genre, the press cartoon. Each week, as you probably know, if you read Vox Europe, we report on a major event through the eyes of a cartoonist, the cartoon of the week, and both our guests are regular contributor. Nothing better than to give the floor to you, the two of you that we, that we regularly publish, as, as I just said, the day Niels Bo Boyesen and Italian, the Italian Emanuele da Rosso, based in the Netherlands. With, with the two of you, we're going to look back at 20, 2022. And um, maybe just before we start, to give us and our guests an idea of how European and international we are for this live today, could you please just let us know in the chat in which city or country you are, you are right now? Myself, I'm based in Paris. I won't have the time to write it down, but I'm looking forward to see where you all come from. Just uh, that you know that we will record this event because we're preparing a shorter version, a video that will be published later on on Vox Europe. Mm -hmm. So right now, let me now present uh, our two guests, Niels Bobo Yesen and Emanuele Daroso. I'm thanking both of you very warmly for your partici participation today. Niels, you're a freelancer for the Danish Daily I'm sorry, I'm not going to pronounce that Lance. properly. Jylland Posten. Jylland Posten, yes. Jylland Posten. Since now 25 years. Yes. You mm -hmm. also uh, illustrate children's books and um, you graduated from the Na Danish School of Design and the New York School of Visual Arts. You have a website. Uh, maybe we can add it in the chat. Emanuele, you're also a freelancer. Uh, I just learned that most cartoonists actually are freelancer, e even when they've been working for 25 or 30 years mm -hmm. for the same newspaper. Uh, you graduate, graduated in journalism at the University of Groningen. You run a communications company and collaborate with the cartoon syndication platform Cartoon Movement and are in charge of communications at the European Press Prize. And you will have something to announce us uh, about I that. Will. Well, thanks a lot for the invite. Uh, and uh, also thanks for supporting cartoonists uh, with your publication. Okay, that's, that's great. That's a pleasure. <laughs> I have a first question. As you saw, our title is, Can We Laugh at 2022? And we also hope that we can laugh at 2023. And that, in a way, could be seen as somewhat provocative. So this is my first question to the two of you. So maybe, Niels, how do you see that? Are, are you, you're not shocked by our title, are you? No, I'm not. Uh, I mean, it usually it's uh, the entry into cartoons, also editorial cartoons, can, it's also or often like humorous, or could be. But uh, even though it's uh, like... Um, very heavy uh, subjects we are commenting on this, especially last year. Um, but I think it, it could be uh, it could be a good headline for this uh, because we have to keep it light and we have to draw people in in order to um, to make uh, our point. And for me, it's like always been more than like asking a question uh, instead of just telling people how I find this or this subject. Uh, so I, I like to keep the, uh, the entry into whatever subject a bit light, though not always funny. So I, I think it, it's, um, it covers the, the, the specter of uh, seriousness, I, I believe. Okay. Is it a question of knowing how to keep a, a distance? Um, what do you mean? A distance how? with the event that you, you managed to look at it with a certain distance. So maybe this is not... Yeah, and you mean using humor? Yeah. No, it's just as uh, just as much to uh, make it um, more uh, attractive to people to draw people in, and okay. you can you can you can have the humorous angle and then sort of work with it. Okay. When it works. And um, okay, thank thanks, and Emanuele. So before we start showing the cartoons. Yeah, I think it's an interesting question, and it's nice to start the conversation with that. 
um, I think it's it's easy to 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 ask yourself if you can like a uh, laugh about something when that something is already passed. So definitely we can laugh about it now. But I also think that we did laugh about it when we had to laugh about it. So during the whole 2022, I've seen so many good cartoons about so many uh, important and very heavy topics. I mean, uh, at the beginning of the year, there was uh, the Ukraine invasion and there were so many great cartoons about it. And I feel like they helped people understand the different angles uh, um, of this, uh, this conflict. And it's the same for all the things that happened during the year. So, yeah. I mean, uh, then it, sometimes it was a, like a hard laugh. Sometimes it was more like a giggle. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just more like a sad laugh because mm -hmm. of course not all the cartoons uh, make you laugh. And, and some things there's, you know, like, I mean, I was truly scared when I found out about the invasion of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's an historical event. Uh, you try to make sense of it, then finding a way to laugh about it at the beginning, it's really difficult. There is a, um, a documentary about the Twin Towers uh, mm -hmm. and how to make humor after the Twin Towers, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, the reflection about uh, about that uh, is about time. So you need to to find the right time to say the right things. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, nobody's gonna laugh, and a lot of people are gonna get upset instead. So it's a fine line, I feel. Okay, thanks a lot. But I suppose that most of the time you need to react pretty quickly. When you had, yeah. for example, the, the invasion, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, you probably had to produce cartoons right away. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sorry, but, yes, but but also I think it's uh, because it's a topic that draws on and on and probably will carry on for some years. We also we also have different angles to it. I mean, there's a there could be like a there's. Uh, According to the war, there's not a funny side, but you have the human uh, perspective to some of it. You have the tactical perspective. You have the political perspective, and so you, you can sort of like uh, take different angles uh, because you have to when you, when you sort of uh, when you have to work with that subject, a, a topic uh, over s such a long time. Um, so just to compliment uh, Emmanuel, that yeah. that. Uh, we, we, you, you usually get a different angle with every cartoon, though it's the same topic. Um, it could be light, it could be, uh, it could be a different, uh, it could be the human perspective, which, which isn't funny. Uh, it could be like, how is Germany reacting right now with the arms uh, deliverance? And, uh, with, and there could be something funny there, but uh, just to, to point out that there's a problem, you can use the funny side with the political side, but not perhaps on the human angle. Okay. Yeah, there's, a, there's always a fair amount of uh, knee-jerk response cartoons right after something like a war starts. Um, but it's also because making dark humor immediately um, doesn't always work. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, as freelancer, you also need to think about what is going to sell to some extent. So some cartoons that you make, I made a cartoon uh, with, with, with split in two and there was a, a Ukrainian person, uh, 2021 with a, with a face mask um, and then 2022 with a gas mask. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that cartoon I thought was funny, but it was the day that the conflict started and no, it was not that funny for many people, you know, also, you and didn't, it didn't sell. So that's why you no, didn't I, put it in your selection today. I didn't include it, maybe because of that, yeah. Okay, okay, I understand. You already started answering actually the, the first questions I had. I was wondering whether you saw 2022 as more intense because of Russia's invasion mm -hmm. of Ukraine. Of course, you know, such a major event, which seems to be, of course, about to last mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, that, that amaz enables you also maybe to look at it with the different angles you were just mentioning, uh, Niels. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I mean it's it. We had climate change, we had the pandemic, and then uh, the invasion of Ukraine, and and because it's so close to our our hemisphere, and in, 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 it's in a, a war in on European soil, it's uh, it's. I think we have a different angle to it. We, it's closer. It's it's more. Mm. It's more. Actually, it's more personal at some point. Okay. Um, so, uh, I mean that has a, an impact as well in how we approach it. Okay, so I was thinking maybe because we, we have a selection of your cartoons portraying you know, the major events and maybe we could start 
with okay. uh, the, the, the following up with the COVID, uh, the pandemic wasn't over actually when we started this horrible year. Yeah. And I will let you maybe comment the the. the oh yeah, but that that was just a, an initial thought about uh, we. I mean, thinking it now it's all over and we can go back to normal and and just relying on the news uh, and yeah, like stepping out in front of a truck. So it, it, it's pretty self-explanatory, I guess, but that was my, my uh, basic for drawing this one. And Emanuele? That's already uh, the Ukrainian conflict. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, I liked, uh, when I do cartoons, sometimes I use uh, art references uh, and I try to also change style a bit. So it's also challenging myself. Uh, here we are, uh, I use the Van Gogh uh, sunflowers because also the sunflower is a symbol of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is uh, this is more on one of the cartoons on the, on the soft side because it's more like, okay, the sunflowers are getting burned. Um, and um, so instead of uh, analyzing one specific aspect of the world, like, like Nils was saying, like now we're talking about the, the, the tanks uh, that needs to be sent or not. Uh, so there's uh, reflections that are more on the specific point. At the beginning, it's more about what happens in the war. And uh, okay. so for me, this was more like a kind of grieving kind of cartoon, you know, that shows uh, with a visual metaphor using uh, a famous painting, uh, what happens. Yes. And this is like, uh, about the, the young uh, Russian recruits um, um, who are being sent to Ukraine and just uh, to this meat grinder we were talking about. So, um, well, I just to say that uh, actually, again, it's like uh, depicting war as such, as a, as a yeah, uh, the waste of it. Uh, when did you draw uh, this cartoon? Was it at the very beginning? No, no, it was a no, bit, no, it was later. After, yeah, after they okay. started uh, recruiting. Yeah, this one is started recruiting. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one of the cartoons that uh, didn't, uh, that this one went viral actually. And I think it's also because uh, of the usual and uh, I think unavoidable unfairness of the media when when there's a media hype, uh, which is definitely justified because it's a, it's a war and it's a, a really um, possibly massive scale conflict. Uh, there's always a certain degree of unfairness towards all the other areas of the world that instead are not uh, um, uh, considered enough. So the cartoon was just a reflection on that. I think it just uh, showed uh, uh, really clearly for some people, uh, also the people that are in the countries that are counted there, but outside the frame of the journalist, what uh, uh, what media is and what war is. Um, as I said, also this cartoon, I mean, there was quite a, a fair amount of criticism um, on me for this because of this kind of um, tendency to think that everything that uh, is uh, trying to reflect on a broader scope of things is what aboutism. But in the end, uh, the reflection over what media are doing in terms of covering different conflicts is always there, you know, and then we, we see that with Palestine, for example, and with uh, many other places. So the idea was simply trying to tell another story. But uh, I like that's I think this cartoon and also the previous one by Niels like, exemplify what we we're talking about. There's different angles. And it's also, I think, very interesting to take the angle of the Russian people, because there's people everywhere and the war is fought by soldiers and many of them are just sent there, you know, to the slaughter. And, uh, um, and it's also really important, I feel, to portray also that on the other side, mm -hmm. instead of just taking one side. And that's also what a cartoonist mm -hmm. does. Uh, but about your cartoon, uh... Emmanuel, it's also like uh, it's a criti criticism of journalism as such, the sensationalism, and and I think without without uh, diminishing what's happening in Ukraine, that's also a very important point. 
in what we're doing. We have to criticize ourselves and, and, and how we approach whatever news comes up. But that's why we really, really badly need you as journalists, because journalists don't do that. You're the only one having yeah. this, you know, this post uh, yes. views on, on, on our work. Yes, and, and it's allowed for us to have a, like a personal point more than a, a factual point, I think. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this is also, of course, from uh, from the Russian invasion. Uh, it was also quite in the, I think, quite at the start. This was just like, um, um, I don't know, a way of uh, pointing out that that uh, Ukraine was like like there for the taking uh, of the Russian, like a party gone wrong or something. Uh, um, like just seeing Ukraine as a not a country or not a people, but just like a thing to be taken or eaten or um, yeah. So this one I, it's one of my favorites um, because I think it's just also a funny idea, and uh, I was really happy when I had it, and I haven't seen it around, so that's also one one big plus because uh, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, it's it's about the European dependency uh, on gas, and I also think a bit about the 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 spoiled attitude of uh, of Europeans about this thing, you know. So that's why I use the baby um, crying as a as an image for that. And uh, the, I have this. I mean, I think I, I started thinking about this when I think uh, when I thought about Mother Russia. You know, we we uh, we say that often, you know, Mother Russia, Mother Russia. And then I thought, well, maybe this is actually how you portray the the gas dependency. Okay, at some stage, the baby is supposed to be weaned. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah indeed. Yeah. That was uh, that was a very early one. Actually, I think it was. I, was it just before the war or something? I think I saw the date. It was just before. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Invasion. And so it's just like uh, uh, inflating Russia and the I saw the whole Russian way of thinking or the Putin way of thinking, it just growing bigger and uh, getting back uh, what they think are stolen from them uh, in Ukraine and, and the Crimea at that point, I think it was. Um, so, yeah, just uh, as exemplifying a, a, a way of thinking, I guess, uh, sort of a Lebensraum uh, perspective. And this one is uh, starting from the Iron Curtain word, and then uh, I, I just uh, try to make look like the the heater was the curtain, and then you got this person. So there's also the this classical image of the person peeking through, um, and uh, I, I mean there are the I wanted to make something about the with the heater as an object, but so many cartoons were done about that uh, with with that object in, inside. It was really difficult to find something. So then you really start thinking, okay, you need to exclude all the cartoons you saw uh, that use the heater in many different ways. There's one by Cher Royas that I really like. That's this heater. Then there's like there's a there's a coin a coin machine next to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, or the beggar next to the heater, you know, you got all these uh, images, but then I just started thinking, okay, I need to try and find something else. And then you you think about uh, common knowledge over Russia, you know, like before Mother Russia and then the Iron Curtain and uh, all those things. And, and just this one came out. Okay, next one. Next event. Oh, yeah, that's... Um... That's uh, Elon Musk buying up uh, Twitter. And what would happen? It, it was in an early point when it was a bit uh, in the open. What would happen? How would he uh, use it? Uh, what, so it was just a, some sort of prediction. I, I don't know if it will stick. But uh, well, that was the general idea. Mm -hmm. This one I really like because you can show Twitter without showing it, you know, like yes. you see my cartoon, for example, but this one, it just needs a feather um, and the bones uh, and yeah. it just, 
it's really like tight and uh, and uh, neat. I really like it. Thank you. And mine is a bit more literal. Um, and this was when I think it was when he did announce that he would purchase yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and I I mean I did it before this actually happened, uh, as in all these people came back on the platform. But then it was actually exactly like this. Um, so everybody was back, uh, and of course uh, the last one, but the most important. So I also put it, you know, like in the in the corner where the diagonal leads uh, towards the towards the entrance. Uh, Donald Trump uh, uh, there, you know, in the end he's there, he's not there. I mean, he just refused to to come back to Twitter. But I mean, it's basically as it was. It was invited back. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like. Yeah, the, with this one, maybe the difficulty was deciding who would pu be put in the frame, like coming back, you know, so they also left mm -hmm. some people covered for the people to imagine uh, who would get back to Twitter. And then I, I should have done a follow up who gets out as well instead. Um, because, uh, yeah, I don't know. And the platform is changing really fast. And um, and I believe the quality is a bit lower. So so everyone could be running out on the next one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. A question that goes well with the, you know, the Twitter. Uh, my colleague Paul just uh, asked the question: What are the main social platforms for cartoonists? Where should we follow you? Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. yeah actually, definitely. Yeah. Actually, for me, it is. It's like um, I think the main okay. thing for me because it's all, all also targeting journalists in general, and, and it's covering politics as well and i mean it's a it's we have to see where it's going but uh, for now i i guess it is okay still okay not mastodon yeah. or no i i'm i'm there as well i just logged in but i haven't really posted anything yet but... okay and for me i tried them almost all also because of my work i thought you know i even tried uh, tiktok um, and actually, Zach, a cartoonist from the Philippines, uh, I mean, I want to say in my defense that he's 10 years younger than me. So he's maybe in the age bracket that can understand TikTok. I'm already like off of it. But he told me, yeah, also the cartoon movement should be on TikTok. You should do these video montages in which you explain stuff. I'm like, yes, but I don't have time for that. It's really demanding. But I do believe that new audiences, uh, um, already Instagram is old. Uh, the age bracket of Instagram is already my age uh, and if you want to go below 25 uh, you need to go on other platforms so it will be interesting to see what happens if you go in on TikTok um, because in the end the risk is always that you kind of like eco chamber yourself and uh, and then uh, on, on Twitter especially uh, also because of how things are going now it's getting narrower and narrower and also all the platforms tend to kind of privilege this real experience of like close friends and then the algorithm just shows your cartoon to like one tenth of the audience mm -hmm. um the bigger like the best venue is always uh you know publishing with a big newspaper and then they publish your cartoon because they have a massive mm -hmm. following otherwise it's really mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. and um and then also yeah i'm on mastodon it's a mess i don't get it i'm sorry yeah. but like it's just really not uh, not my thing um and uh and then uh, i have also seen uh, newsletters uh services uh, working quite okay in the us for example so it really depends on mm -hmm. which audience you want to reach as well but but isn't instagram and tiktok more like a process oriented uh, it's but, you like you like to see yeah. what's happening you have to keep something moving so instagram yeah, yeah it's becoming a bit more yeah, yeah. um and I don't want to just get into the, the 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 practicalities of Instagram, but it's it's still a image based medium, mm -hmm. social media. I mean, so you, it it kind of goes quite well with images. Uh, but this said, the algorithm privileges uh, faces over cartoons. Mm -hmm. So then, okay. If you have questions, uh, by the way, you can write them down in the chat. I'll ask them for you or. We will uh, open the, the mics uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes before the end of this, this session. So you can also ask them yourself. 
I also uh, wanted to add, sorry, Catherine, to, cool. to interrupt you, because it's because of all the questions. I said that I will draw the portrait of the first person that asks a question, which is not Paul, because it doesn't count. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I will, I will do that with the first person. Also, Gianpaolo <laughs> doesn't count. <laughs> okay. And do I, do I count? No, probably not. No, okay. you also don't count. I can do no, it for know, you anyway, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Let, let's, let's carry on with the, the next uh, major event. Uh, yes, we have to wait a little. There might be a little connection problem. Uh, I suppose Gianpaolo is kind of frozen at the moment. I'm seeing so. some questions in the meantime. Ah, okay. Uh, yes, a question from Cecil Ertz. Um, how can you draw in a way to, to give hope? I think that whatever we do, we give hope. I mean, I, that's... That's what we're supposed to do, I guess. Uh, it's a way of coping with these huge uh, bad things happening in the world. So, I mean, just putting it into perspective and putting in putting it words on it on, and a picture to it, I thought it's a way of coping with it. Um, hope is a big word, but coping with it is, uh, is uh, what we're aiming at, I guess. Getting a handle on things, yeah. Okay. And Emanuele? I think for me, it's all about information. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's more about not being scared of things because you understand them. And in this way, I see cartoons as journalism. Uh, so we help making sense of things. At least that's the hope that we have. And, uh, and so reading uh, the, the, the news or like just going deeper into a topic or trying to find an angle that the cartoon can show, for example, like the one of Niels uh, of the Russian soldier uh, being, uh, being uh, in the middle of the, of the bullseye. Those things help people understand and then get more informed. And that means that you are less scared of things because you understand them. And that for me, it's uh, something that... Uh, uh, gives hope because it just allows you to to live uh, in a better way because you have some context in the world in which you are. I think yeah, this one uh, was on uh, the la the um, um, first uh, number of uh, Charles Hebdo of 2023. That was the anniversary number for the attacks. So they did a campaign against uh, the um, Iranian uh, um, authorities. And uh, they asked the uh, cartoonists to submit their cartoons. Uh, so I, I was one of the 30 cartoonists that were selected for the, for the newspaper. So it, for me, I mean, Charlie Do, we can think what we want about it, uh, as in uh, if they are doing cartoons that are enjoyable or not, uh, for many people, they are not. But I thought that the topic was really needed, uh, um, you know, and that the discussion that came out of it, uh, although ugly, uh, from the Iranian side, of course, uh, um, was really important. So um, it was about for me to do something that was uh, punchy enough without being uh, in full-fledged uh, Charlie Hebdo style, which uh, I, it's not my style. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought uh, the, the scissor at some point became one element of the cartoons that were like uh, um, used because, of course, the women uh, cutting their hair, uh, you know, they were making it into a whole protest. So I thought, what happens if instead the scissor is needed from the uh, mullah side? Mm -hmm. And so I just put the, the women on top and then uh, uh, they basically play with the scissor while he's trying to take it because, of course, he's getting strangled by the, the hair becoming the noose. So, yeah, I think maybe this is my favorite for last year, honestly, because... Okay. Uh, um, I thought it was it's such an important uh, topic as well. Mm -hmm. As we talk about caricature, I have an additional question for you, Neil. So because you uh, you work at the Ulands Boston, and um, it's the Danish daily that first published Mohammed's uh, mm -hmm. so-called satanic caricatures, and we mm -hmm. was wondering whether that ha has any influence on your work. And do you, for example, self censor 
It's a very direct question. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, no, no problem. I, I didn't, I didn't do the drawing uh, because I didn't agree with the premise of it. Uh, we were like every uh, cartoonist in Denmark was asked. It was not not just the uh, cartoonists on the newspaper. It was everyone uh, in in Denmark. So I, I declined because I was I disagreed with, with the premise of it. I, I thought it was too uh, provocative at the time. I did we didn't we nobody was to, uh, thinking about security or what could happen mm -hmm. at that point. It was just like uh, the following year it all happened. It all went completely bananas. So um, but it 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 did make it ha it has made a difference uh, to us all in especially in Denmark of course. But, but I guess, guess to all cartoonists, we are suddenly very much aware of, uh, we have a different audience than we used to have like 20 years ago. This is like uh, 18 years ago, so, uh, 17 years ago uh, when it happened. I mean, ever since we've, we've been thinking, uh, it's a global thing now to be a cartoonist. We, we, we draw for the whole world. You, mm -hmm. our, our cartoons are shared all over the place. Uh, uh, so, we are talking like I once thought of this as standing on a on a dark stage and you and you're you're telling jokes and you can't see the reaction. Everything could be happening down there. So yeah. we have to have that in mind during doing our things. I won't call it self-censorship, I would call it being aware of who we are talking to. And we have to do it in a broader sense. Mm, okay. I don't think there's any uh, subject I wouldn't uh, touch. Okay. But perhaps the way I would disc I would work with it has changed. Okay, thank you. And and Emmanuel, you live in the Netherlands, a leading free speech country. Well, we know that journalists, politicians, artists have been threatened by radicals. Do you do you also keep that in? Do you, I mean while you draw, is it something that you have in mind? People, you. Um, yeah, I mean, yes. I think I totally agree with Niels. Uh, and there will be the same answer I can give in terms of topics. I've never thought, oh, I cannot draw about this thing. But mm -hmm. then how you draw about something is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and yeah, the Netherlands is uh, uh, in a good position in terms of free speech, but we have our issues. Uh, and uh, I mean, just to give some numbers, it was fourth uh, in, the, in the ranking for uh, um, free speech. Uh, two or three years ago but then a journalist was murdered in broad daylight in the center mm. um you know and that's actually says something also about uh, the level of understanding of threat uh, or the level of protection that's given and there's a, a really many things moving like in the in the in the darkness you know and uh, so it's i feel like uh, some topics are, are really difficult in every country in europe for a number of reasons and I myself, I don't feel particularly in danger, to be honest. Um, although with Charlie Hebdo, there were some hiccups, uh, also with the Italian uh, uh, side, you know, and that there was like a whole thing that happened in the media. So and it was really unpleasant, actually. But uh, one needs to be aware because uh, it, and it's also in, in a way understandable because they're different, uh, like your audience is not uh, what it was uh, no, 20 years ago, I was definitely not a cartoonist. 20 years ago, I was like 10. But I mean, it's uh, it's still like now things are are changing. And and uh, and one thing that maybe it's for me different as a perception than Niels is that I like your audience, you don't see that, but actually you kind of see that now because that following the same metaphor, it's not a theater and everybody is sitting there and, and taking it. Now they're kind of they can shout back. You know, and then you're gonna hear them, and uh, and then it, that's how it goes on social media, for example. You know, and even if you publish with a newspaper, then they're gonna still come and uh, and comment under your posts. So you you really are like more like doing this like stand up where you see the public, and then they can be like, oh, this sucks, you know, and uh, uh, or worse. Yes. But you can change it. I mean, you you've said what you said, and when you oh, yeah. when you're producing it, you don't know how the reaction. You yeah. it's not it, you're not just uh, playing the audience. No, you, no, you no. actually you actually say your punchline and then you go away. So there's yeah. not uh, no dialogue really. You just have to either defend yourself or mm. or make some something new. Okay. Yeah. Subject, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we will open the mic in in a minute. Just maybe we can see the last cartoons. Uh, no. Yeah. That you've chosen. It, it was my bleak uh, 
view into uh, 23. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going pretty much the wrong way. So it's a okay. reverse. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all reverse. reverse. Yeah, reverse options. <laughs> so, yeah. Good one. Uh, happy New Year. Yeah. The answer is blowing in the wind. Yeah, yeah. So this is a cartoon. Uh, that's one of the last cartoons that I made last year, and it was a uh, um, thought more for the American audience because of the storms that they have there, mm, okay. and uh, and it was indeed on the Washington Post, so um, okay. it worked. And um, but yeah, so climate change. Uh, you you just finish with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's what it is, you know, and, and, and the answer is so obvious, right? I mean, this is a Bob Dylan song, you know, the, the, mm. uh, blowing in the wind and the, the answer is definitely obvious. Um, and yeah, and we're not doing nothing. And I mean, this is the same cartoon I'm gonna have to remake this year as well, I feel, because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that nothing is really changing. 